Well, hello there, everyone. Mr. Oldenburg back for another edition of Math with Me. Eminem. Good times. So we're going to finish up this really short unit with solving problems with line plots. So it's more than just looking at a line plot and asking questions about it or looking at data, figuring things out. Sometimes we'll actually ask you questions that make you think. And once again, just like the rest of the stuff, semantics matter. You have to understand the question before you can answer it correctly. Um, and then I'm going to teach you some quick tricks with adding fractions because the way that the book shows you, not ideal. Well, at least not to me, but that's because everybody's brain works different. So uh, what did I mean by that? Well, as you look here, this book says, uh, this problem says they're showing the average rainfall in September for every day. So each of these dots is one day. And you're going to notice that they give you a lot of fractions, right? And they want you to add these things. So how do they want you to add them? Well, like this. They want you to basically take each value and multiply it by the frequency that it happens. And then you're going to get a list of mixed numbers that look like that. That, well... Let me at least get my pointer out here, Mr. O. All right, so you're going to get a list that looks like this. Then you have to change them all in improper, I mean, uh, like denominators, and then add them up. That's a lot of steps. So, I don't really like doing that. But if they were to say write an equation to show this, I would want to use something like this to display it. And the way I would do it is like this. And this is worth showing you because it's actually really important. So I have uh, my first value, which is a quarter. And I would multiply it by the frequency that it happens, which is 5. I would then get my next value, which is 3 eighths. I would multiply it by the frequency that it happens, which is 12. Same for a half. And I would keep doing this until I had 1 for every value they show. And this is important because you're telling them that you understand what you're looking at, that I have five groups of five-eighths and things like that. Three-quarters times three. Then you got to make sure you pay attention if they wanted an equation or expression. Right now, this is an expression because there's no equal sign. But if they want an equation, I need an equal sign and a variable that you can't see behind the thing. So get in the habit of doing that because you're going to have to. You're going to have to prove that you know how to solve it, even if they don't ask you to solve it. Now, I said that I had a different way than getting all these mixed numbers. I wasn't lying, I swear. So let's get rid of this. Yeah, goodbye. Let's blow this bad boy up. Bigger. Bigger. There we go. So, kids, I don't know about you, but I like round numbers, whole numbers, putting things together where everything just fits perfectly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to think about my math knowledge. Things that I know about math. Well, I'm pretty sure that if I take one quarter and I add it to three quarters, I get a whole. Same thing if I take one quarter and add it to three quarters, I might get a dollar. I like that. I like it a lot. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to work with as many whole numbers as I can. So, I'm going to group things. I see that I have three quarters. So, I'm going to take three, I'm sorry, I have three three quarters. And I have three one quarters. I'm going to take both of those, and that's going to equal three. Makes sense, right? If I have a three quarter plus one quarter is one, two... Three. Bam. Now check this out. I see I have halves. Well, I know two halves make a whole. Alrighty. Where am I going with this? Well, one and then two. So now I have two holes. And you might say, wait, wait, Mr. O, hold on. You still have these days without anything. Well, yeah, because now I'm thinking I have a half and I have two quarters. And I know that a half and two quarters equals one. 
So right now I'm just combining like denominators because you can only add denominators that are alike. And I'm finding whole numbers. I haven't worked with many fractions at all yet. The next thing I notice is that I have 5 eighths and 3 eighths. And if I combine those, I get holes, don't I? You sure do. So check it out. Here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 eighths. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3 eighths. You know what that is? That's a big old 5. And then you say, wait, there's leftovers. And there's a lot of them. And I'm going to say, good, I'm starving. So right here, I might say, well, what do I have? Well, I have 3 eighths, and I have 7 of them. So what I'm going to do is this one I will multiply. 7 3 eighths. I get 21 over 8. And I, divide, I changed my improper fraction to a mixed number. 8 goes into 21 two times with a remainder of 5. So that equals... 2 and 5 eighths. Now, what's beautiful about this expression that I have over here? I'll tell you. First of all, I did it. So anything I do is beautiful. But on top of that, I'm only working with one fraction now. And to me, in my brain, this makes it easier for me because I'm not going nuts finding common denominators, uh, making um, new fractions, things like this. I'm working with whole numbers that I combine and then sticking a fraction. Matter of fact, I'm going to stick that fraction down right now because I know in the end I'm going to have five-eighths of something. I know that because I'm not going to add any other fractions. There are no other fractions. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus another 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, plus 2 is 13. So it's 13 and five-eighths. Same way to get that answer, except I'm making holes. I like to work with complete numbers. I don't want to make things hard on myself. The most important thing you have to do here is make sure that you are paying very close attention to the numbers that you've used. Okay? Sure, let's move on. So in class, we talked about this line plot with the salt left, and they just asked for some generalizations about the greatest and uh, the difference between the greatest and the least amount of salt left. So they weren't asking you to add up all the stuff. All they said basically was, and let me make this a little bigger, they want to know the difference between, and this is basically the range, the greatest and the least. Well, my greatest value is 7, and then when I look over here, I'm going to see that I have 1, and then I have a fraction. How many skips do I take? 1, 2. So that's 1 and a half. So 7 minus 1 and a half. It's going to be a good old... Oh, do they want the difference? Yes, they do. It's 5 and a half. Because 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 minus a half is 5 and a half. I really want a quick erase button. I feel like I'm coloring. Get some Bob Ross in here, make some happy little trees. You should Google Bob Ross, kids. All right, well, actually, no, don't Google Bob Ross. Never mind, I'll take that back. Just look at some of his pictures. Don't read about them. So write a problem that can be answered using the line plot. So I'm gonna look at what I have. I could use anything. What is the total amount of salt left? How many um, containers, because if you had, you got to make sure you read your bo uh, boxes. They were talking about containers here, right? So I could say, hey, how many containers have less than four grams of salt? How many containers have four or more grams of salt? Um, I could say, what is, I said the total amount already. You could make up any number. Um, what is the least amount of containers that... Um, or uh, which amount of grams has the least amount of containers. You could think of anything that relates to this graph. All you have to do is think and then use whatever comes to your head and make sure it makes sense. Notice I stumbled and it took me a second because I wanted to formulate my sentence correctly in my head. It's good to take that extra second to think. Write and solve an equation that represents the total number of grams left. This is where we go back to what I said before. I have a value. My first value is one and a half. And remember, it does not matter the order here. How many do I have? Three, six, seven. 
plus four times two plus six and a half times three plus seven times five equals salt because it said equation, so I must have an equal sign and a variable. Um, and if I were to solve it, we did this in class. So let's see if I remember. Oops, I almost hit the delete button. All right. So here, if I'm combining stuff, I have 8, 35. These are six and a halves, right? So I have 1, 2, 3. That's 18. Plus the halves that are here is 19. So that's 19 and a half. And then here, I have... Um, let's look at groups of two because every one and a half equals three. So three, six, nine, ten and a half. And then I add these values. All right. Well, ten and a half plus nineteen and a half. Well, the half and a half make nineteen twenty plus ten is thirty. Plus another thirty five and eight. Got thirteen, seventy three grams and not gram in our class he has an h in his name just kidding we don't even have a gram in our class i did one year though he was all right now the way i added it if you noticed wasn't like what the book said where you know you multiply each frequency times its value that would have taken forever i grouped whole numbers but you have to have a very good concept of number sense you have to understand what you're working with all right. Oh, you know what? I want to go to the next page. So, again, we're writing an equation for the total amount. They love this question. So what do I have? Well, I have to make it bigger because I need to be able to read it. I'll make it down here. So, again, I have 12 and a half, and I have it twice. I have 12 and 3 quarters, and I have it 2, 4, 6, 7 seven times Whoosh. I have 12 and 7 eighths five times I have 13 five times and I have 13 and an eighth whoops four times uh, I don't remember if they asked for an expression or equation so let's check always check your work Write an equation, so I better make sure I write an equation. Try to get that as close as possible. That looks good enough to me. Uh, so it's an equation, I need an equal sign and a variable. And finally, the last question is gonna ask about the difference, I believe. Oh boy, got spots. You haven't seen the Got Milk commercial in a while. I'm just saying. That was a big thing for a long time. What is the difference in length between the longest and shortest lengths of string? So the difference, meaning subtraction. Well, which one's the largest? 13 and an eighth. Which one's the shortest? 12 and 5 eighths. Do not get fooled. There is nothing here. There is something here. There is something here. There is nothing there. It's like the space between my ears. It's a brainless joke, kids. It's a brainless joke. So I get 13 and 1 eighth minus 12 and 5 eighths. Now, if you remember, let's spend a minute and talk about uh, subtracting mixed numbers. First of all, my, where is my cursor? Oh, wrong thing, that's why. My denominators are the same. They're already common. I don't need to change anything. However, I can't take five away from one. Can't happen. I need to regroup. I'm gonna take a hole from the 13 and I'm gonna bring it over to the fraction. My denominator's eight, so I'm gonna be putting eight eighths there. And I told you that the shortcut is just add the denominator to the numerator. Eight plus one is nine. Worst nine of my life. Nine minus five is four out of eight, because that stays the same. 12 minus 12 is zero, so I have four eighths, which if I divide by two, I get one half inches. 
And that's all we got today. It's been 15 minutes. It's been great. Enjoy, study, read, be careful.